Now starting, all attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to the webinar on the theme, Weathering the Me Too Storm. My name is Vinod, the moderator for today's webinar. The webinar is divided into two parts, the learning session for 45 minutes and Q&A session for next 15 minutes. We would like to hear from you. We would like to include your questions in the conversation. So ask questions, use the chat panel on the right side of your go to webinar player to share the questions anytime during the webinar. It's my privilege to introduce our featured speakers, Ms. Vijay Hari, CEO and co-founder of Kelp HR and Ms. Smita Kapoor, CEO, I'm sorry, co-founder of Kelp HR. Ms. Vijay Hari is author of Behind the Closed Cubicles and CEO, co-founder of a human resource consultancy firm www.kelpechar.com and specializes in setting up government's models, prevention and judicial committees of sexual harassment, diversity offices in corporate world. With more than 18 years of industry experience in MNC across India and USA, she is a speaker in several forums on this topic and has conducted awareness workshops across India on the topic of prevention, sexual harassment, and gender and diversity sensitization. She is a passion, she's passionate about this topic in social causes pertaining to women and children. Welcome, Vijay. Our next speaker, Ms. Smita has, Ms. Smita has 20 years plus experience in the area of uh, core employee relations, training and development, grievance redressal of complex workplaces issues, including complaints of discrimination and sexual harassment, conflict resolution, diversity and inclusion management, mentoring and employee engagement activities. She is currently the co-founder and subject matter expert at, at Kelp HR, which offers HR expertise on prevention of sexual harassment, diversity and inclusion, training and development programs for corporates, Smita cites on 15 IC committees as external member. Welcome, Smita. Thank you. Uh, a good, good afternoon to both of you. Now over to Vijay, please. Thanks, Vinod. Uh, very good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for taking your time out and joining us on this session on weathering the Me Too storm. So I'm moving on to uh, slide two. So what is this noise all about on hash me too tag? Why are employees using this tag? How are organizations reacting to this? And what is the response from media on this? So uh, just to get, give you an overview on the whole thing, this whole me too thing was started by Tarana Burke in 2006 after speaking to a 13 year old ordeal on sexual assault. So uh, she created this whole uh, silence breakers uh, the forum and she started talking about this in 2017 she was recognized as the times person of the year and that's when the entire uh, me too campaign with uh, in the u.s uh, went to the peak with harvey weinstein sexual abuse allegations and so many other things that came out including the some of the president's names and some of the top celebrities names that had come out in the last two months india has also seen a lot of Me Too movements starting with Tanushri Datta and resulting in more than 200 plus anonymous, some anonymous and some with names that has come out in the social media. And some of them as old as even 10, 15 years old. So why are people speaking about it now? That's something that's old and some, for some which they don't even have a uh, proof evidence is not there right so since then several cases have emerged from the closets from various industry media agencies and politics as well right and resulting in so many of them resigning top people resigning from their positions right so how are organizations reacting to this i'm moving on to slide three some of the uh, famous industry cases that had come out in the last couple of months. Uh, the famous Google walkout, uh, which is there across the globe, resulting in Sundar Pichai changing uh, the sexual harassment uh, policies at Google. And uh, the different famous names that we all have been tracking. 
Why me too? In slide four, is it because of lack of IC, as in the case of uh, Tanushri Datta during her uh, time? So, and uh, ma majority of the film industry, they are not really having posh compliance at all. Or is it the lack of an empowered IC, where the IC is not having the power, despite that they are given the role of being in part of the committee? Um, as in the case of phantom films where they claim that they have a HR and they have a policy, but they had not empowered or they knew about it and did not take any action because one of the senior persons was involved. Lack of trust in the organization, we have seen how Google employees had walked out. They couldn't address it internally, but they had to take a walkout across the globe. right? And uh, the overall organization culture also plays a very, very crucial role uh, in uh, people, instead of reporting it within their organization, they come out to the media. Like in the case of Uber, uh, where uh, uh, Ms. Fowler had actually raised the complaint on the social media a couple of years ago. And uh, the Nike's case where a lot of women employees had done a secret survey among the women employees and they had submitted the entire report uh, to the CEO's desk. Because of the local, the culture in their organization, the work culture, it kind of flowed top down where people just shoved it under, under the carpet. It was granted that uh, sexual favors were granted in such organizations. So they had to resort to these measures. And uh, social media is something that they, it's there at the fingertips of everyone that they use it to vent out. They know people, the victims know that they cannot get justice. Uh, they cannot uh, ensure that the harasser is punished, but at least it's a way to vent out their, the anger. Some form of letting others know that, hey, this person is the harasser and watch out, right? So alerting the others. So thanks to media as well for all the awareness they have been creating. There is an article every other day in all the leading newspapers and magazines on this topic. So uh, I hope I'm clear. And please uh, uh, keep posting your questions. We'll take up all your questions and answers uh, at the end of the session. I'm on slide five. So what should I see? Uh, the internal committee or the HR or the employer should do to avoid Me Too. No one would want their organization's brand appearing on the media for wrong reasons, right? So there are uh, uh, five tips that organizations can follow uh, to avoid their names going to media for the harassment cases. Uh, number one, uh, follow the five key checklists for compliance as uh, mentioned by the law, uh, 2013 law on sexual harassment. We'll take a detailed look at that. Number two, choose and create the right internal committee who believe in the cause. It's not just important that you create a committee, but the right set of people who believe in the cause, who are mature enough. And this actually makes a huge difference in your organization, the trust that people will have. Number need to be trusted by all employees. They need to be approachable and they make a huge difference. Number three, have an experienced third party and panel with your organization. This third party uh, should have uh, a strong experience on this and should be empaneled with multiple other organizations. So the best practice from the industry is brought into your organization as well. So choose the right third party person that is going to again make huge difference to you. Uh, and ensure that employees have trust in the committee, trust in the organization, have an open door policy where employees can walk up to the HR, walk up to their managers, and walk up to the organization, the leaders anytime, and discuss these kind of issues. So I think giving the uh, top priority when someone talks about it or any small hints that you get, take immediate action, that enhances the trust among employees. And finally, set the right organization and work culture where leaders also need to set an example, leaders, the top management, the managers. That is where the entire work culture is going to be decided. So choose the right work culture in your organization so that the others are going to follow the same. Yeah. Uh, moving on uh, to slide number six. 
So this is a slide where I'm just quickly summarizing uh, on the, the five key responsibilities of the organization, the checklist, the basic compliance checklist. Number one, create a policy. Creating awareness to all your employees, including your housekeeping staff, your admin, security, your contractors. So that's very, very important for housekeeping staff. Do it in the colloquial language. Uh, it's just a quick 15, 20 minutes session would do. And uh, right, have the right internal committee, form the right internal committee, and empower them. That's most. That's the key thing where you empower them, where they have a free control to do preventive measures. Uh, do your annual returns filing, one uh, in your financial uh, reporting IT returns that you do, and one at the beginning of the calendar year, uh, reporting the results of the previous Jan to December. So that is submitted to the uh, authorities. And finally, display the posters at conspicuous locations. A lot of question arises on the posters part. Uh, people display it inside the cafeteria. They don't display it in the lobbies. Uh, the law specifically says that uh, the idea is to display on the lobby so that any woman who walks into your organization is protected, be it uh, a courier delivery person, a vendor who's walking into your organization, uh, uh, an employee who comes in for interviews, so any women walking into any organization needs to be protected, and that is the objective of the law. So posters displaying at the lobbies is a key point. And I'm moving on to slide number seven. So the law very clearly talks about prevention, prohibition, and redressal of sexual harassment of women at workplace. So prevention is going to be the key. I've kind of displayed uh, the prevention uh, in red and in a bigger box so the more time spent on the preventive measures the lesser time that you go end up spending in redressal and trust me prevention is much easier as compared to handling the cases when the complaint has come in so we would definitely want to focus uh, go ahead and do your quarterly meetings without fail uh, with your ic with your internal committee with your third party where you discuss the best practices uh, what can be done? You do a quick check on where uh, your employees, what the pulse of employees are. And some of the uh, quick preventive measures that I can think at the top of my mind are uh, definitely sensitize your employees, mm, preferably do a separate session for managers and a separate session for your uh, employees. I don't really recommend doing anything based on gender. Uh, include everyone together. Uh, but managers do it separately because managers are uh, the key people who are interacting with all the employees very closely with their team members. They need to be aware on what are the right do's and don'ts and how to handle if a complaint comes in. Uh, number two, do a uh, uh, mailer awareness more frequently. Uh, E-learning uh, uh, e awareness or a classroom session can happen uh, once in a year, uh, is something that's typically recommended. Uh, whereas uh, on a frequent basis, on a quarterly basis, go ahead and run some mailer campaigns or on a monthly basis, send out uh, one email campaign or mailer or share case studies on best practices uh, or any complaints that has come and share that as with employees without uh, mentioning any name, I mean, try retaining the confidentiality, just to just can be shared. Check the policies uh, or in your organizations. Are they all gender neutral? What is the language that's being used? Do you have a relationship policy? Do you have a dress code policy in place? Uh, some of the organizations, they do not really have it, but uh, yes, this definitely does help in preventing um, uh, uh, some of the policies that some of the organizations have is that women need not, should not stay after 8 o'clock without uh, permission from their managers. These are some of the ways that they can provide safety to employees. Uh, leaders can go and address the employees on a time-to-time -time basis and check the pulse of your employees. Randomly check, talk to people, talk to focus group, have uh, random discussions, open the communication channel to all the employees and understand the pulse, what's happening. So that's something that's key uh, that will really help. Uh, and do some anonymous uh, uh, checks where people are free to drop in their suggestions anonymously as well. So open up anonymous suggestion boxes, encourage that. So that is something that you can really gauge what the pulse of the employees or organizations is definitely. Yeah. So uh, without any further delay, I'll move on to case number some, some of the uh, real life cases that we have kind of come across or 
we'll go ahead and share that. Uh, over to Smita uh, to take this forward. Thank you, Vijay. That was quite insightful. Now, uh, while now that we know the theory part of it, that what are the key things that an, as an organization you should be doing, it is very important to dive into the cases. Now, all those participants who are there right in front of me, okay, uh, listening to us, these case studies are for your IC members or HR. Okay, this is not for you to be sharing, as Vijay said, do case studies. These are not those case studies. Okay, this is for you to dwell on that if such scenarios occur in my organization, what are those steps that I will take? So presenter, will you move to the next slide, please? Okay, uh, while he's trying to move that. Uh, so this is the case number one. What happens like we all had uh, in the Me Too cases getting reported on Twitter, on blogs. So this we have picked up from there without naming, of course, the real life uh, cases. So this is a lady called Shama. She's a model complained about her ordeal on social media. She speaks about how the CEO of, of a particular media company treated her in a particular shoot. On the pretext of showing her how to pose, he touched her inappropriately several times. She was uncomfortable and did not know how to handle it. She tried to avoid but could not do anything about it. She desperately needed that job and had to play along. Seeing the Me Too movement now, she thinks that now she has the courage to report it on social media. So this is what she has reported on social media. Now, if this hits your organization, if this comes to you, if your organization or your organization senior person is reported, how do you handle it? Okay. We have heard of instances all across uh, in September through October and now also in November, such cases creeping up, everything being reported on social media. I have known of many organizations which say that not my problem. It is on social media as per IC, as per the 2013 Act, IC needs to get a written complaint. Okay. Now, just uh, putting a pause there, I will also read to you what the CEO said. The CEO said this is all nonsense. She was a struggling model and I was helping her cope with the industry. I was a little cap compassionate towards her as I knew she was needing the job. I never touched her inappropriately. The first reaction of any person who is accused of sexual harassment. Be prepared for all these statements, right? As an IC member, as an HR person, this is what you will hear. Now, but this is your CEO speaking. Can you tell him that I do not trust you? No. Can you tell the complainant that this is all what you have said? We do not know when it occurred. Maybe no. So presenter, will you move to the next slide? So these are some questions we thought as an HR person or as an IC member will come to your mind if this kind of case hits your organization. Can or should internal complaints committee take on this case? Now, if you look at the law, law says we need a written complaint. We need a real complainant to be there in her absence due to physical or mental disability. Somebody else can complain. But now this is something floating on social media. Can we acknowledge that? Right. So I remember a conversation with a respondent where he was asking me exactly this. There was a case which he said that you do not have a complainant. It could be a competitor who is complaining against me. How would you handle it? So to that, our response is very clear. I mean, I, we try to draw a parallel. We said that what happens if you have an expensive jewel in your house, right? And you have given all the possible security to protect it. Somebody anonymously calls you and says that that has been stolen. What is the first reaction of you as an owner? You will open up the... Uh, your uh, safe box and check whether it is there or not there. You'll not start blaming the security system, right? That is exactly what I think an organization to, should take a stand. They should at least open up and check whether this complaint has any validity, okay? Which is very, very important. I feel that internal complaint committee should register this case. What happens to the confidentiality in the case? If you look at the law, law is very clear that we should maintain confidentiality about the complainant, which is very important. Now, if you look at Nirbhaya, we, while we dig in, we would know her real name, but throughout her case, her name was mentioned as Nirbhaya, right? So confidentiality of the complainant is very clear. She is anonymous, but she wants the complaint to be highlighted. 
So yes, it will be on social media. Maybe you will have to approach her via social media, asking her to identify herself, maybe giving your email IDs of an external member in your IC to approach if she doesn't trust the other IC members, you could do that. What happens if the complainant is anonymous? Of course, um, there was an update, a case law, which if you uh, look up, um, no, stay there. Okay, there was a uh, case law where uh, there was an update saying that if there is an anonymous complaint, the, com uh, the committee even has to look that up. So it is very important that we look it up. What happens if the owner or the senior most employee of the organization is accused? You know, this is very, very tricky situation, okay? Because all the IC members are the employees of that organization. And if the owner is blamed, please have a very strong external member. Trust me, external member at that time gets a lot of value because that person has nothing to do. They, that person is not obligated towards the organization they can ask those strong questions. If you think that you cannot ask those questions, list those questions and pass it on to the external member and she can handle it really well. She, he, I, we could have both the genders being part of external member. So it is very important that as an IC member, the bias doesn't creep in. You know, the first reaction of our organization is that if the CEO or the top performing employees blamed, our first reaction is, that she was a struggling model. She wanted a job. She was trying She was trying to get some money out or she's trying to get her performances to be uh, taken care of. And that's why she's blaming. Now she's coming after 10 years. Tanushri Datta is also blamed, right? That why is she complaining after 10 years? Why didn't she complain? Why did she go to social media? Trust me, as a woman, I can say that it is very, very difficult to stand up and tell about your ordeal. I speak on the subject a lot and I have got a confidence after so many years of experience. Now, if you have to ask me, would I be able to do this 20 years back? Maybe not. So it's not easy. So let's empathize with people, right? So moving to case two. Presenter, yeah. So the case two is, what if I do not get anything in writing? Now, as a committee, this is a major issue that we have. Now this case says, Shalini works for an IT company. She has recently moved to onsite for deputation. Her leader is based out of Pune. He keeps reminding her that he has helped her move to onsite so quickly and has been sending her, now he's trying to take advantage of the situation and has been sending her unwelcome WhatsApp messages and has been warranting, wanting some sexual favors. She's quite indebted of him because he made that move possible but is not sure how to respond to his sexual advances, how to respond to his dirty messages. She can't even block him because he's, he was her leader. Shalini speaks to her HR business partner based in Pune about her leader's unwarranted WhatsApp texts. HR business partner asks her to give a written complaint, which she is really scared of doing. Now Shalini is scared, but what she's okay is, she's okay to share those WhatsApp messages. Now, how do you deal with it? So presenter, will you move to the second case, a uh, second next slide? So what as an IC committee, you don't have a written complaint. Can you register the case? No, we need a written complaint, right? Very clearly. But now we have WhatsApp screenshot. Can we move with that? So what I recommend the IC committee is that have a conversation with Shalini. Tell her that this is the process. If, if you have forwarded us the WhatsApp text, that means you want us to do something about it. If you, if we can help, if you really want us to help you, you need to help us. Trust me, these conversations, making them feel protected, making them feel that they are not going to lose their job, making them feel that they are going to be secure within the organization, telling them what is the culture of the organization really preps them up. You never know. I have got many complaints written after the conversation that we have had. So that's the step one. But what happens if some people are too adamant saying that we wouldn't, we could use those WhatsApp messages and have the conversation with the leader and ask him to back off. Maybe we could cannot do a formal investigation because we don't have anything in writing, but we could use it as a prevention. So very, very important. Okay. So here we have, uh, we remember Vijay's boxes that she shared. This is that big red box. 
that we are working towards prevention, telling him to back off and maybe disconnect her relationship with the manager. And she's put in different projects, so they are not having any conversations. So very, very important. As an organization, we have to, as an organization and as an IC member, these are some things that we have to do. Okay. Presenter, will you move to the next slide? Yeah. Case three, watch out. There are other languages. Now, this is very, very key. What do you mean by other languages? Body languages. As an IC, very important for you all to have a cue about it. Now, Reshma is an executive assistant. She filed a complaint against her boss. She's an executive assistant. I'm sure her boss will be some senior vice president in some organization or maybe higher. Okay. Now, he's a senior executive and he's been demanding sexual favors. She did not have any proof against him. Holding effective interviews was the only methodology that I've seen. Now, this has happened within the car. This has happened in the closed cubicle. How are we going to identify that whether did, did this exchange even happen? Did Ish Reshma try? So as an IC, very important is to strike a balance. We are not going to get swayed by the complainant or the respondent. We have to be balanced. When we are, so we actually come up with a plain paper and we list down that what are the thoughts that we are having about the complainant? What are the thoughts that we are having about the respondent and get it weighed by the entire committee. Maybe that unconscious bias might creep in. You might think, oh, Reshma, she's an underperformer. Maybe she's trying to get more months to stay in the organization because she knows as soon as she makes a sexual harassment complaint, her attention from her performance might move out or she might move out to a different leader who will be more lenient. This boss is not too lenient. So all these things come up. Maybe this has really happened. Okay, so let's very, very important for IC members to strike that balance. Okay, you they have to think that it could have happened or it couldn't have happened. We shouldn't start blaming. Now, effective conversations or effective interviewing questions are very, very important. And during those questions, watching out of out for body language is very, very important. I remember in one of our cases when we were interviewing a particular person, he was constantly looking at the right upper right corner and responding to us. Now, if you look at your NLP notes, you can clearly see that it means that he's creating stories. OK, so when you look on your top right corner, he's creating stories. Now, is it 100 percent? No, it is not 100 percent. But you could dwell on that particular question because that is the question he did not think coming. So you could ask more questions still on that particular scene in various ways. So as an IC, you should upskill yourself on body language also. If somebody is giving you constant eye contact, very, very important, maybe he's trying to understand whether you're buying his story, story, right? So it is very, very important to make those notes and dwell further. You know you have put that person in an uncomfortable situation. Ask more pointed questions. So what are those pointed questions? Why would she blame you for this particular harassment? Maybe she could have blamed more senior person. OK, this question works very effectively. That why you? OK, did if she had given you an instant, were you present in that room at that particular time with her? OK, why did this scenario happen? OK, uh, understand about her performances. But trust me, do not mix two things. I have always come across people mixing performance with sexual harassment. Don't do that. Okay, It's important that we segregate. Will you move to the next slide, presenter? Presenter, will you move to the next slide? OK. Uh, also, uh, in our earlier discussion, uh, Vijay was mentioning about Bill Gates' video, which even I have to look up. Uh, in that, it seems when she, he was being questioned by the attorneys, he was moving his head in negative while he wanted to say Bill, something. Bill, Bill Clinton, I'm sorry to interrupt. Bill Clinton, not oh, Bill Clinton. I'm sorry, I got sick. <laughs> you want to narrate that incident, Vijay? Uh, okay. Uh, there are a lot of videos that you actually on YouTube that you can actually look up, uh, which uh, very clearly says uh, 
in I think in 1998 in January he went and Bill Clinton said that uh, he didn't have any sexual relationship with Monica Lewinsky, and his body language is uh, I did not have a sexual relationship. So it was like he's going up and down head movement while saying no, which is a clear sign of lying. Yeah. And uh, again, at the end of uh, 1998, he goes and acknowledges that he had a relationship. So these are some of the studies. You can find a lot of tips on body language as well. Body language is a very important tool for IC. Yes, we are not trained, but these are some little, little things. If you look up, I have a beautiful video on that, which speaks about body, body language, which we could use. Okay. So presenter, will you move to the next slide, please? So the case four is about are we the moral police? This I get asked every now and then after my awareness sessions as well as after my IC session that are we moral police? Are we uh, running a school or a college where we have to roam around with a stick and tell people this is the right behavior, this is the wrong behavior? Are they not taught from their homes by their parents? Why are we stuck in this? So this is a, another lovely case. Now this is a lady called Sonia, an employee from financial services company, complained about a colleague Raman's inappropriate sexual advances. She confessed to have been verbally flirting around initially. She stopped responding to his advances when he started get, expecting physical favors. He had not been leaving her alone since then. She's finding it extremely uncomfortable about the entire situation. Now, what was Raman's response? He, when we called him, he said, really? Sonia complained, but she never told me that. I did not know she was uncomfortable and we, she was enjoying all the attention that I gave her. I'm surprised that she has even complained to IC. Now, this is something that I get to see every time, okay, especially in mutual relationship. I think somewhere one of the partners does not get understand that he or she needs to back off. Now, as an IC, what do we do? Presenter, will you move to the next slide? Should I register this case? Now, I see clearly says it's a mutual relationship. It is something now are we getting into people's personal relationship or, you know, are trying to understand what they do outside of office. If a harassment has happened now, as per her complaint, there is sexual advance. This is a colleague whom she's reporting. Yes, you have to register the case. OK, it seems like a mutual relationship. How are we going to resolve? Trust me, mutual relationship going sour is the most difficult cases to be solved because as an IC, we sit and break our head and we are looking at n number of WhatsApp chats. We are looking at email exchanges. We are looking at witnesses and half of them are saying they were in mutual relationship. Half of them, they are saying something else. So how and when are you going to sit down and draw? Actually, chronologically, you have to list down the events at what time it became sour. What are those clear indications that the woman or a man had given to that other person saying that he's not or she's not interested? This is actually a work like, you know, logically as an IC, we have to sit down and do it. Another important aspect that we have to figure out, was there any um, boss subordinate relationship between them? If there is, then it's again clear case because if you are a boss or a subordinate and you're at a workplace, you cannot have mutual relationship. You have to declare in advance. And if you have not done that, then it comes as sexual harassment case because it could be out of pressure that a person has accepted the mutual relationship. OK, so all that has to be identified. Um, isn't a woman equally responsible of the situation? Do not know unless we sit down and draw it out. As an IC, we are not stepping in with the bias thinking, oh, mutual relationship, what can we do? Okay, I hear the statements from IC. Fortunately, I've been very fortunate that I have 90% of really, you know, balanced headed folks who come back and do not make those statements, but I still face 10% of people who say, mutual relationship, what can we do, right? So as an IC, as an organization, we cannot ignore such cases or any kind of cases which has been termed as sexual harassment. What process will IC follow? IC has to ensure that they take the complaint, they speak to the complainant, 
take the entire download of WhatsApp, of from where did they start the conversation, when did, what kind of um, notification or in, uh, conversation she had to tell him to back off, when was that date chronologically written down. When we have the act, we have to send a notice of hearing to the uh, uh, respondent. The respondent comes and then he explains his part, sorry. Then sit down and verify. Look up if you could want, if you would want to meet any of your witnesses listed by them. As an IC, you could call out your own. I mean, if you feel that these are some witnesses who have been colored, maybe you could call out your own witnesses because a couple of your internal members are also part of IC. So exactly understand that who could add more value right to the case. So at the end of it, look at everything. Please be objective. See, this is not something that is going to come just like that. OK, we need to train our brain. Very importantly, work. Remove the biases out of your mind. I'm saying it and you're thinking it must be easy. It's not easy. It needs a lot of practice. Maybe first case you dealt, you have your own uh, you know, flaws and you feel this must, this should have been done differently, but keep working. And that's how you'll get it, right? This is the process that we follow. There are many mutual relationship cases which comes to a point where you say that cannot be proven. All right, great, no problem. Okay, close the case saying cannot be proven, but disengage their working relationship. All right, so very important that we take. I have heard of um, mutual relationship as in husband and wife reporting sexual harassment case at workplace. Right, husband and wife. And reporting sexual harassment case? Yes. Did we take it? Yes, we had to take it because it was at workplace, right? So these are some cases which come by. You shouldn't get baffled, okay? Very important thing. There are different, different kinds of employers, IC members that we come across. One of them says that my organization, such things will never occur. Trust me, overconfident employer. Second type of people who say, I'm very scared. I just pray to God every day that such cases do not occur. Underconfident employer. And there are third type of people whom I meet every now and then. They say that we have done enough and more to educate people. Okay. We keep doing this work constantly. All right. And we have a strong IC team. When it comes, we'll do the right things. These are the employers we want to create here. And that's why this webinar, right? Do the best thing, do the right thing. Always, whenever you do the right thing, think that if it goes to the higher court, how will the court look at it? Have you given it due justice? Okay, have you done or have you checked all the boxes? Not, not just checking the box, but due diligence is complete. Trust me, you will be the winner, right? Move to the next slide. Presenter, please. All right. Case five is uh, its way of life. Now, this is very, very common because we heard of a lot of media cases getting reported, and this came up all the time. Eric from a media company complained about slang or sexual words being used at his workplace. He says that he's not sure how others feel, but he finds it extremely offensive, especially when it comes from senior leaders. He says that there is this particular leader who uses these kind of words in every statement, which makes the entire environment negative. <clears throat> when he raised it with his immediate manager, he was told to just ignore it. He was told it's a, it's very common in this field and you know, you sh should start enduring it. Trust me, these words are used. That he cannot complete a sentence. It's like an exclamation mark, right? He uses it in every sentences. But is it acceptable? Presenter, will you move to the next slide? Yes. Can internal committee take this case? Now, this is the first question. Eric is a gentleman. As per law, only women are covered. How would you take it? Right now, I know of 90 plus percent of organizations which we work with have gender neutral policies and they have said that we will extend this law even to men. So it is his, her and they now with the article uh, uh, of LGBT inclusion coming. Right. So they said we will include such cases. What process will the organization follow? Now, there are perpetrators come 
and sit uh, in front of us and say, but this is no women complaining. So how could you make this, take up this case, right? Now, sexual harassment is sexual harassment. It could be for men, it could be for women. Okay, so we have to be sensitive with this, right? Can the respondent ex escape the accusation saying it's way of life? No, they cannot. If even one person has felt that it is offensive, it is offensive, needs to be re uh, reported, needs to be actioned, and ensure that this does not repeat. We are here to provide a safe and secure organization or environment for everybody, right? Not majority of people, but for everybody. If even one person is feeling uncomfortable, we need to take action. Can, can they escape saying that it's not from a woman? If it is a gender neutral policy, they cannot. But what if it is gender specific? I would recommend HR to do it. I would recommend HR to take it as a workplace harassment case and investigate. Now, when they're investigating, they would find that there are women who are getting impacted, move them to sexual harassment, right? So then you have two cases building against that particular individual, which is sexual harassment plus workplace harassment. So that is the case five for you. Moving ahead. Presenter, will you move the slide? Okay. Case six. I need protection. Now, this is a very, very common case, um, especially with the really big guys being reported. A case was filed by Shamita against a senior leader called Jacob. Jacob is very powerful in the industry and internal committee could not get a single witness who could testify against him. Finally, a couple of witnesses were named by the complainant to speak, but they were all very scared of him because they thought that if Jacob gets to know about it, yeah, they will never get jobs ever in the industry. They had some solid statements, but were very scared of repercussions. So what do we do? Okay, move to sli next slide uh, presenter. How can we, uh, the witness be protected? Yes, witness can stay anonymous. However, witness can also, witness also has a right to not speak up, but that is something that we, do not promote or do not speak about it, but we can protect witness identity completely. We can ensure, give them that confidence and take an extract of the entire statement and send it to the respondent for his defense, for him to prepare his defense. Can I see force witness to testify? No, we cannot force witness to testify, but every statement is under oath. So if a witness lies, he will also have repercussion, but can he say that I will not speak or I will not testify? Yes, he can do that. He can remain silent. Can I see for their own witness list over and above that complaining? Yes, I mentioned to you that they can over and above uh, the respondent and the complainant's list. I see on their own can pick up few witnesses which they feel would add value to the subject. Now, that is the end of this uh, case six. I think we have come to the end of case six. Vijay, would you want to add anything on these cases? Yeah, thanks, Ms. I think uh, you kind of touched upon uh, all the uh, scenarios. Uh, I think quickly to summarize, uh, I think some of the questions are flowing in. Uh, I request everyone to start posting your questions. So in 15 minutes, we'll be answering your questions. And in the meanwhile, while the questions are flowing in, uh, some of the key points to a focus on is have a strong internal committee and create the trust among your employees to come and report it within your organization. And uh, definitely I recommend a gender neutral uh, policy. That way you have a buy-in from all your employees. Uh, women only policy kind of men, men uh, they get scared on uh, what if women go and misuse the law. So we don't want that happening. We want a uh, buy-in from everyone and I think uh, of late uh, a lot of uh, organization that I speak to uh, with focus on DNI diversity and inclusion people are going with making all their policies all their e-learning material the training materials to gender neutral In any cases they look at including he she they uh, as Mita clearly said make it very inclusive and that is going to give the right culture for your organization so, uh, Vinod or Avinash, can we uh, take up the questions?
Okay, so I think there's one question from Naveen Sama. Uh, the question is, do you recommend changing committee members at regular intervals? Yeah, the answer to that is the law very clearly says that at the interval of three years, the entire committee has to be changed, including the third party. So uh, I, the reason is so that there is a fresh perspective that comes in. Uh, the new members can create uh, newer uh, preventive mechanisms. They probably can create a better trust or uh, just changing the committee. That's the reason what the law says. Uh, and uh, do not change the entire committee because the learning from the old members is lost. Uh, just uh, ensure they are still part of the advising committee. They are still uh, available or typically change uh, once every year, release one person and add another new person so that the rotation is there throughout. That is one good practice. Another question from, how long can a complainant take a file, take to file a complaint after the harassment incident takes place? That is from Jennifer Mercy. So Jennifer, very clearly the law again says that uh, within three months from the last incident occurrence date, the complaint uh, should be registered. Uh, there is an additional time frame of another additional three months up to maximum six months uh, time frame from the uh, date of occurrence, last incident occurrence, the complaint should come into uh, the internal committee. On the same lines, uh, I see another question from Nilangshu Goshal. Thanks Nilangshu for joining in. So um, his question uh, very clearly says, um, Oh, one minute. I'm just. I think there are a set of questions, three or four questions. Uh, yeah. So, how are Me Too cases accepted for investigation, even though most cases are beyond six months time frame as per the Act? Right. So, very clearly, some of them, yeah, a couple of years old as well. So, the point is, uh, though it is six months old, uh, and if you don't want to take it up as part of the internal uh, the Posh Act, because you're not really obligated to take it, uh, definitely take it up as part of your disciplinary actions. Take it up under your HR uh, the, uh, policies, uh, harassment policies. Give the trust to employees that you are listening to them. However old it is, you will take some form of action. If not the right action, because you don't have, you may not have proof. At least try to do some preventive measures. That definitely enhances trust among your employees. Yeah. So uh, Nilangshu's other questions are. Um, can an employee file a defamation suit as well against the complainant who has reported a false complaint with the ICC? Yes, definitely a defamation suit can be filed. Uh, but I don't know if your question says, can it be filed with the internal committee? Uh, not with the internal, I mean, internal committee is not obligated to take up the defamation suit, uh, but they can definitely have to penalize the person. They'll do separate investigation to penalize the person for filing a, a false complaint, but defamation suit, with the authorities can be definitely taken up. They can file a separate court case. So uh, I have there... a question from here. Uh, this is from Saubhmya Malkani. She's saying, is it compulsory to record the investigation proceedings that happen between IC and the witnesses or write them down verbatim? So Saubhmya, that's a great question. And during our workshop, we let people know that writing it down is important. But as you know, we are not skilled stenotypists, so it gets difficult for us to make notes. So what we recommend is that with their permission, ask them if you could put it on an audio recorder and record the whole thing and then summarize the uh, summarize the statements. This works well, delete it, take the signature on the summarized part, part and tell them that this has been deleted. So that much trust needs to be built in within the witness and the IC we could work that out. Okay, there's one more question, Vijay, if you're looking at. This is from Roshan Main. Uh, he's saying Miss Smita spoke about mutual relationship. She said that there can't be mutual relationship between employees. Can it be explained in detail? No, no. <laughs> in fact, I'm a big promoter of having mutual relationship at workplace. I think people are excited to come to work if they have mutual relations relation at workplace. I'm sorry if you got me wrong. I meant the subordinate and the boss mutual relationship is a questionable status, okay? Because it could be because of force, right? If they are in mutual relationship, you know, famous case of Anish Murthy, okay? The primary reason why he was uh, asked to go uh, uh, in Infosys and then in, um, uh, in uh, 
I get was because he had he was a senior person and he had a relationship with somebody junior, right? So this is something which is not acceptable. Otherwise, mutual relationship is completely fantastic. If your uh, organization uh, allows you, go ahead. I have known of organization which believes in no dating policy also, which I'm not too fan of. But yes, this is these are my thoughts. I'm sorry if I, if you got me wrong. And of course, maintain uh, the decorum, office decorum at work. Yeah. Yeah. So PDA is something uh, uh, which is pointing out to public display of affection is something that which is not acceptable at workplace because that could create a hostile environment for others. So it is very important that we. Oh. So uh, for workplace harassment, will the committee composition be the same as the internal committee for sexual harassment? So workplace harassment can be dealt by the HR. So there's no uh, uh, real obligation for you or there's no mandate uh, to form a committee composition. It will just come under the HR's purview to handle that. So that is to answer Rahul's question. Uh, I see Sonia Kaul's question, which says, what is the tenure of the cases, the settling time? So we have to close the case within three months, uh, Sonia. But 90 days is the time to finish our investigation and close the cases. I know some organizations which even very clearly have put it down saying within one month they will close the case. So this is like with less than what the law stipulates. So it's okay to have a lesser time frame and try and that, that increases the trust among employees. Do you think it's a good idea to have people from HR in the internal committee? That's a question from Tanya D'Souza. So uh, Tanya, uh, that's an uh, interesting question uh, because in my experience in a lot of the organizations that we work with, uh, most of the cases uh, HR head or the HR person actually plays the role of the presiding officer because HR kind of owns this uh, posh policy under their purview. And uh, the, all the other members are typically uh, senior people from uh, the uh, business of uh, the operations and all those things. They're not really full time committed to this whole thing. So HR plays a very crucial role. Please do have HR in your uh, committee. That's something that we also always recommend. Uh, the reason is uh, definitely a senior women have to be as part of the presiding officer. But apart from that, when you have the HR, uh, it's easier for the HR to run around and gather all the evidence and proof. Uh, like for example, uh, pulling out the performance records, pulling out the attendance records or any CCTV evidence and doing the scribing role or creating the report after the investigation. So HR plays a very crucial role in terms of going and implementing it. And they are the ones who can go and actually go and implement the preventive measures. Uh, the presiding officer can recommend different preventive measures. The IC committee can discuss and list it out. But at the end of it, implementing it goes always to the HR's uh, owners. So uh, on what Viji said, I have a little uh, different opinion uh, and we keep debating and breaking our heads on this. So I would actually don't, I gently don't recommend HR people to be part of uh, IC. The only reason is because they are also executors. Okay, now this is nowhere mentioned in law, whether they can be or cannot be nowhere mentioned. This is Viji says. It is very effective. I, I have been an HR person all my life and I, I am very sensitive when I'm dealing with cases. But if it, there's an HR person, as Viji said, that there are a lot of preventive action that comes up. OK, what happens is a lot of brainstorming or preventive thoughts get shot down when HR person is there because he would look at the feasibility and say this is not possible without even trying is what my experience is. And another thing that I have a thought about is that they are also executors. They are the guys who give the, uh, you know, the uh, warning letter or the termination order. OK, so I would recommend like the judicial system and police, they are different. I would recommend that they sit as the police. OK, they they give the verdict. Uh, I mean, uh, the court, the IC team gives the verdict and they just execute it. I would recommend it. but. Viji's experience is different. So it depends from organization to organization. There has been or have many organizations which has only an HR head who's the senior most person. So we cannot do anything about it. And that person is part of IC. So this is for something, Tanya, that you have to sit down 
and think through the do you have anybody else who is as competent because hr people they know the nerves of the people they understand the psychology and another thing is that because they have so much of baggage they come into the ic with the baggage that i know this guy he is like that only you know so that is something for you as an organization to take a call okay another question that i can see is from hanumanta peddi so the question is how to handle if there is a complaint on a person while serving the notice or soon after leaving the organization so that's an uh, amazing question again uh, so uh, uh, typically uh, sometimes if people get a hint that a complaint is going to come out they immediately put their paper and they uh, try to move out so they're not really obligated they try to expedite their notice period and they try to leave the organization so in such cases uh, when the complaint has come in hr has all the powers the committee Uh, internal company has all the powers to extend their notice period so we can defer their notice period and we can twist as long as the person is on the rolls only then we have the control to investigate because once a person leaves the organization we cannot have the person to come and uh, come during investigation and answer our queries they're no longer obligated right so extend the notice period and finish the investigation expedite the whole process and then let the person go and if the person is already left okay in some cases that also happens because the moment a person has left then the victim has the courage to come out and file a complaint so do take it up understand what is the cause try and get the person uh, if the person has just left you still have control on their full and final settlement see if you can hold that stop that and have the person to come and respond to you uh, you may not be able to take any action on the person this person has already left you cannot pin life person you cannot terminate the person because he's already left he or she has left so all that you can do is probably update the personal record their files in that's in control with you saying that what what the action that you have taken so that any future if the person wants to rejoin or if there are any background verifications you can use that for future reference muta you have anything to add on that oh, i think uh, that is a uh, great uh, vichy I have a question on how effective uh, it's by Ajay J B. How effective is the anti-sexual harassment online training course when compared to cl- classroom training for employees? So uh, it depends. Again, uh, if you look at the law, law says that you have to conduct awareness programs. They do not tell you the methodology. Now, if you ask my experience, I feel it is completely an organization to understand. Now. if your organization are con- conversant with the e learning program then e learning is great because logistically you don't won't have any challenges you have an lms system in place they run well you know your employees are going to take up the program you know they are serious about it this is something that a learning team or training team has to decide classroom session yes you know one and a half two hours when you're doing that program you have a great trainer on the other side you know you have the attention 100% and they go they leave the room with the message loud and clear so this is something which an organization should be deciding that what is the methodology that works well we have also now gone ahead and introduced actually you know clients only give us the ideas of various awareness program one of our clients said that make it more effective you know come up with something very quick so we are thinking of theater based program that is another thing you know getting people to do role plays theater that another way uh, methodology of training program so it is completely what works well for you okay as a third party i can only suggest that more the people logistically maybe an e learning program will work well if you can get people under the room the classroom session will work well this is something that the organization should take a decision okay and there is another question from divya a are interns doing their internship in company protected in that yes divya i'm sorry i don't know if i we did not speak about this but this is very very important uh, what what kind what is the definition of employee in the law if you go look up there are three things that are covered first is uh, employees under employees paid unpaid intern uh, domestic workers housekeeping staff casual workers anybody who comes in contact for their particular work is covered second is anybody visiting the workplace is also covered so if you have a visitor who comes in to meet one of the employee even that person is covered 
a student is also covered student is come to do some you know a work some sorry, project Jindra. work so yeah so we are running out of time i'm sorry i have, I have to stop you uh, answering this yeah, uh, last question uh well uh, on my personal behalf and on behalf of nhrd and i really thank uh, ms viji hari and ms smita kapoor for uh, sharing the wonderful insights thoughts experiences with us uh, we are grateful to both the speakers and uh, with the permission uh, we'll be sharing the slides with all the attendees here thank you ladies and gentlemen we look forward for your participation in our future programs all the questions which uh, remain unanswered uh, you have uh, the email id of vijay and smita on the last slide also i'll be sharing a mail uh, with the ppt slide wherein you can you know ask question and we'll connect you with uh, both the respected speakers here so thank you so much uh, for uh, sharing your valuable time you have a great day till then bye bye thank you thank you so much thank you thank you so much bye bye